What is up, YouTube? This is Zach with SC Fishkeeping, and today we're talking. Hello YouTube, welcome to today's video. If you are new to the channel, my name is Zach and this is SC Fishkeeping and I appreciate you stopping by. If you've been here before, welcome back. It's good to see you. Anyway, today's video is on the green spotted puffer. This fish is one of the most unique, interesting, and probably mistreated or improperly sold fish in the entire fishkeeping hobby. I'm gonna tell you why that is. We'll watch them eat. And you might have noticed from the beginning there, I got a new fun little toy, so I'll show you what uh, fish tuber Christmas looked like to me. So stick around for that. But without further ado, let's dive into learning about the green spotted puffer. All right, so diving into some of the basics on this awesome green spotted puffer. Originally found in the waters of Southeast Asia, that would be where they're found in the wild rather, um, they're known as what's a brackish water fish. Now I'm not going to dive too much into the specifics on brackish water, but brackish water is essentially you have fresh water over here, you have seawater over here, brackish lives in between. It's not fresh, but it's not salty enough to be marine or seawater. Um, that leads me to what I said before about them being so improperly treated or missold as juvenile the green spotted puffer can actually live in fresh water and so you actually find them sold a lot in fresh water and described as a freshwater puffer but as the puffer ages they need to move into this brackish water and increase that gravity range and get closer and closer to a salt water type setup so if you buy this puffer fish thinking that they're just going to be a freshwater fish for their entire lives you will end up killing them. That's just the truth. So diving into some of the specifics on the specific fish. Maxing out at about six inches in size. Um, they can live for about 10 years. Some have been known to live a little bit longer. If you plan on keeping one of these, you need to plan on having at least a 30 gallon tank for one and a 55 gallon tank if you wanna keep two. Not typically known as a community fish, they are extremely aggressive, they are very powerful, and they will do a lot of damage to anything with fins or essentially they can just eat your other fish. So it's best to keep them in a single specimen tank. The green spotted puffer is a very curious fish, so it is often advised to give them a lot of things that they can search around for, caves, hiding spots, and give them some room to kind of uh, explore, change up their decor, often. Uh, I personally change mine and try and move those rocks around um, once or twice a month, honestly, and they do seem to enjoy it. Uh, they're very active always, but typically so more active, rather, after I, I change their decor. Tank parameters, anywhere from 78 to 82 degrees is typically preferred. pH-wise, 7.5 to 8.5, and for the gravity range, which means just how much salt to put in their water, 1.004 when they're young, and then by the time they're full grown adult, you want them having a 1.022, which if you know about salt water is pretty close to a marine type setup. That's why they're not typically advised, yeah, not typically advised for a beginner aquarist. So before we get into some footage of them actually eating, and I, I tell you a little bit more about that awesome new toy that I got, and what it means for the channel, um, we need to talk about the green spotted puffers diet probably common sense that feeding your fish a healthy and specific diet for their specific needs is, is rather important. The green spotted puffer has one specific reason that you have to feed them their type of food. The green spotted puffer have four very sharp teeth that come together and form a beak. Now this beak, their teeth are constantly growing and you have to feed them hard foods that they need to break apart to grind that beak down. If you do not do this, that beak will continue to grow and it will eventually get to the point where the puffer cannot open their mouth 
so they cannot eat and it could potentially kill them. If your puffer reaches this point, there are ways of actually grinding the teeth, the beak down yourself, but that's not something that most people would want to do. I personally have never had to do that with mine because I feed them the right stuff. What is the right stuff? Well, it's pretty simple. Snails and clams and shrimp. That's what I feed mine. Snails, clams, and shrimp. Snails like your Malaysian trumpet snails and your ram's horn snails, those pest snails that you see at a lot of your big box stores, you can actually ask them and a lot of times they'll give them to you for free. You can throw them in your tank, let them reproduce, and your snails will have food for you know, almost ever. Um, I use these Hikari clams on a half shell. It's a fantastic option. Same kind of concept. The puffers have to break apart that shell. It'll help grind down their beaks. And then I will also, every once in a while, use store-bought frozen thawed shrimp, just like you or I would eat, and uh, I'll give them the tail with some of the meat in there so they have to kind of break that apart. Like I said, I've never had to grind down my puffer's beaks, so these are fantastic options as far as food goes. One of the most important, or another important thing to know with them is they're extremely messy eaters. So more so than a lot of fish, it's extremely important to have strong, powerful filtration with these guys. You almost want to filter your water five to ten times per hour over filter just to make sure that these guys have healthy water. These guys are also considered to be gluttons. They will overeat, so you just need to be careful and make sure you're not feeding them too much. They will bloat up if they're full, but it's just because they have a lot of food in their bellies. And I cannot stress this enough. I know looking at puffers bloated or puffed up might be interesting, but when a puffer swells up like that, that means they are stressed and it is extremely unhealthy. So never, ever, ever tap on your glass or do anything to try and get your puffer to inflate. Please, and thank you. Okay guys, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that care guide. Please go ahead and uh, Drop a like if you enjoyed the information that you saw. Subscribe if you have not already. And down in the comments, let me know what you think about the green spotted puffer. Is this something that you would keep? Or is brackish water just kind of an intimidating and scary uh, concept to you, which it was for me before I decided to keep these fish? If you remember in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I got a new toy. You might see one right there in the form of an LED ring light so I can uh, light myself up even in the dark fish room. Pretty excited about that. The other thing, underwater camera. As you can see, it's not a GoPro. Uh, it's a cross tour 4K uh, action camera. I'm calling it a faux pro, but uh, super excited about this. I've always thought doing some underwater footage and feedings, especially would be fantastic so uh, let me know what you want to see me do with this uh, underwater camera down in the comments but for now we'll go ahead and wrap this video up I hope you enjoyed I hope you learned something new thank you for watching and as always until the next video I will see you soon bye fish see you later see you soon